How are you today? I'm fine, Deb. How are you doing? I'm good. You know, it is so confusing and so distressing for so many people. We can't get a clear answer on this BPA thing. So let Dr. R take yes, the, the stress out of this. Look, there is no one formulaic answer here, and, and it's really important for people to understand that. What the, Even the guys who did this study that was just published in the Journal of the American Medical Association say, look, all it really means is that we need a much better study to narrow this down. Yeah. Here's the background. They did a study on 1,400 people, a little over 1,400. They took a snapshot. That means they took one urine sample in that time. They took a look at BPA levels in it, and they found that the people at the highest level of BPA had a somewhat higher risk of having heart disease and, and uh, diabetes than the people at the lower level. As the guy from the chemical industry says, and I'm not apologizing for the chemical industry, we all hate chemicals. Right, but mm -hmm. as the guy said, look, that doesn't show a cause and effect. We don't know why those people had higher BPA levels. Maybe they drink out of pop cans a whole lot more than the other people. Uh, maybe they eat uh, the kind of stuff that's that, that's stored in cans and containers, and that's not a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. And that's why they have higher BPA levels. And it's not the BPA. You gotta establish the cause and effect. And it's not a very large study. On top of that, 1,400 people. You're only talking about seven. 70 or 80 people in the whole study who got diabetes. So if you had two or three on the other end of the ledger, you'd completely skew those statistics. What you need is a huge study that tracks a lot of people over a long period of time that actually establishes that this chemical causes harm. In the meantime, I always wonder, you know, I'm a world-class worrier. What should I do with this? You know what? I don't worry too much about this one. Okay, if I'm but, really concerned... Oh, okay, but oh. Dr. Art, listen, I just need to say one more thing, because moms who use those yeah. two formulas, what can they do? Yeah, well, moms, that's the trouble for moms. With babies, you really want to reduce the the uh, the um, exposure to as mm -hmm. many chemicals as you Absolutely. can. But you know what? The world is loaded with chemicals. Mm -hmm. If you don't take this, you're going to get that. We need to be able to store the milk. We need to be able to transport it. You know, all those things, they, they don't just happen naturally. This stuff spoils. So they add chemicals to this stuff to be yeah. able to, to transport it and use it. You know, the bottom line is that most of us are pretty healthy. And the diseases that happen to us happen because of choices we make, good or bad, in our lives. Your risk of heart disease, a study in this morning's, uh, well, which I forget which journal it is, but a huge, huge study. Oh, yeah, because I didn't take my ginkgo. But this um, huge study, the Nurses' Health study, showed that if women uh, did the four important life, lifestyle things we always talk about, they look lowered the risk of dying over a period of 24 years by 55 percent. Never okay. mind about what chemicals they take. Okay. The exercise they eat right, they can significantly lower their effect. You uh, could their... just go and go and go. Oh, hey, they turned me on. <laughs> <laughs> they okay, turned me on. let, let me just...